Well, if you clicked on this video, you're one of two types of people. The first being you pulled out the handy dandy credit card and you invested in some eagles of the golden kind and you bought yourself some nice shrubbery. Or number two, you hate shrubbery with a passion and you're gonna watch this video to fuel the anger inside of you and then take out all that anger on some other players in your War Thunder battles. I don't know, but hey, to each his own, right? In today's War Thunder tutorial video, we're gonna be talking about how to get the absolute most out of your camouflage in War Thunder. I'm gonna start off by saying that this video is not about whether or not it's pay to win, if it's fair, none of that. Camouflage is a usable item in the game. And as long as it's in the game, there's gonna be players like myself who wanna utilize said item to get an advantage on the battlefield. And for those players out there who are looking to get the most out of their camouflage, this video is for them. And while I do recognize that it's a controversial topic within the War Thunder player base, and I understand the feelings and reasonings of all those involved, if you feel the need to go to the comments and leave a nasty comment, just go find a video with kittens on it. We don't need that negative energy here. And I know many people claim to use bushes to hide weak points, and that's fine. But the purpose of this video is concealment. It's to hide, it's to surprise. The true purpose of camouflage. Nothing is more satisfying when an enemy drives 50 feet in front of you and doesn't see you. Oh, he's making so much noise. Oh, what the? I'd also appreciate it very much if you punch that like button just like we just punched the crap out of that bushed up ASU 57 on the screen. Thank you so much, it helps the channel out immensely. Sun Tzu said, he who is prudent and lies in wait for an enemy who is not will be victorious. Yes, folks, and if my barely college educated brain tells me anything, it's that this man, Sun Tzu, supported camping. Ooh. Nah, but seriously, surprise is half the battle in any military action. There are three fundamentals that camouflage is trying to accomplish. You have hiding. The action of hiding is setting a barrier that separates you physically and often visually from the surrounding environment and its unfolding reality, like a camouflage net. You have blending, resembling your surroundings by combining different elements into a single entity. The main difference between success to failure lies in properly blending subtle details and disguising. It's an action in which we perform to alter the existing shape or form we do that to eliminate or create intentional target indicators such as smell, shape, or shine. Disguising, for example, is adding vegetation to a ghillie suit or onto a vehicle. For War Thunder battles, we are gonna be focused on blending and disguising since in hiding, we can't put barriers up in the game, but we can blend and we can disguise. We can take different elements from the environment and we can put it onto a fixed shape that is your tank to eliminate target indicators, which we'll talk about later, as well as making us appear to be a part of the environment when we naturally aren't. When you're outside, for example, in a forest, you see trees, you maybe hear a stream, uh, you smell some animal poo that you stepped in, but all of your senses combine this information and then your brain perceives the environment to be something. So in that forest, that's probably filled with a lot of greens and a lot of browns, if a giant silver metal box was somewhere in the middle of it and your eyes saw it, your brain would immediately perceive that as being out of the ordinary because you don't associate big square gray boxy things with being inside of a green and brown luscious forest. So at the basis of every camouflage, your mission needs to be to where your opponent will perceive you as a natural part of the environment. Let's talk about target indicators. A target indicator is anything that registers your mind to the potential presence of an enemy or registers you as a presence to the enemy. Let's examine a real screenshot from one of my replays to highlight what target indicators are. Here's a screenshot I took of one of my recent battles on the fields of Normandy map. Here you can see I'm playing in my tiger tank and there we are nice on the ridge line. You have the nice beautiful French countryside with its orange and red houses. We got the green bushes, the nice green and yellow grass with the dandelions. And then you got my big nasty tank. 
So at first glance, given our surroundings, we have a couple tall trees, a couple bushes, yellow ground. A target indicator to the enemy would be, look at my 90 degree angles on my whole armor. You can totally make those out. Also, the difference in color between my turret, my front plate, and my lower plate. My turret and front plate are significantly darker than my lower plate, and they're also very rectangular. Obviously, we're not counting the massive gun pointing at him also. <laughs> but given such the drastic contrast between my vehicle and the surrounding environment, any opponent would see me and automatically recognize that I don't belong, therefore a threat. So if we remember in disguising that we are trying to eliminate our target indicators, there are five factors when developing your camouflage that you need to take into account to accomplish this. Shape. As the description says, symmetrical shapes or 90 degree angles rarely occur naturally in nature. And there's a lot of sharp angles on tanks. Your silhouette, especially at vast distances, if you're on some high ground, if an enemy looks up at the hill you're on and sees you, a grayish or any dark colored tank, and then the blue sky is in the background or the gray sky is in the background, they can see your outline. You also have shine. Metal reflects light. And one of the cool things about War Thunder is sometimes you get maps where the sun is right in your face or your back is to the sun. And there might be certain parts on the front of tanks that will reflect light more than others, giving you basically a, hey, shoot me, I'm a tank sign. Shadow is also very important too, especially on the front end of your vehicle, underneath the lower plate, underneath the belly of the tank. A lot of people like to put all their camo towards the top of their tank. However, especially tall tanks, all the shadow that's covering the belly and the ground directly in front of their tank is very dark and almost black. And black is a color that almost never naturally occurs in nature. So finding a way to minimize your shadow is also very important. And obviously color too, especially if you get those uh, Bastogne maps in the autumn where everything's red and yellow and then all of a sudden you get like a bright white hay bale on the front of a tank. You're like, yeah, that, I mean, that sticks out like a sore thumb. Or city maps like Berlin, where someone has a really light green bush when there's really no light green bushes on the map anywhere. So with color, you wanna have different shades that are somewhat similar on the spectrum so it looks natural. You really wanna avoid the really offset contrasting colors. Let's go ahead and take a look at two images. One is an incorrect way to apply camouflage. The other one is the correct way to apply camouflage. And our test vehicle for this tutorial is probably one of the most grotesque anti-camouflage looking pieces of machinery that needs an absolute beauty makeover, and that is the Tiger. Ooh. It's so ugly, you could almost feel sorry for it. This image represents the incorrect way of applying camouflage on a tank. Let's remember the five factors. The first one being shape. Look at the top of the tank, you can see the right angle on the top left side of the turret, and you can also see a flat straight line across the top of the turret. So therefore, we did not do a good job of making our shape look more round like a bush. As far as silhouette, it's not horrible. A couple of the camouflage pieces down on the lower front plate, as well as the piece on the top left front of the turret, do a good job of breaking up the outline of the tank. However, we didn't cover all of the spots. Shadow. It's not terrible. The hay bale on the lower front plate extends down underneath covering the belly of the tank where the shadow is most prominent. However, we went from a really dark extreme to a really light extreme. So there is a potential downside to that. If we're talking about shine, we missed the front left piece of armor that hangs over the top of the track. It's angled down towards the front where if light reflects off of it, it will reflect forwards, which is towards the enemy. In terms of color, it looks like mother nature threw up all over this tank. We have two different shades of green, we have a dark shade of brown, and we have like a light somewhat shade of yellow with the hay bales. And they're all just thrown on the tank. So you have four different colors, all condensed together. It's just, it's very, it's like an artist just took a bunch of colors of paint and just threw it on a white canvas and you can just tell that it looks splattered. All right, now let's look at, in my opinion, the best I could do with the Tiger Tank. 
There is so much frontal surface area, it was almost impossible to get almost every inch covered with camo. But starting off with shape, we look at the top of the turret, we don't have any flat lines that give away the top of our tank. However, on the front plate towards the left, I still haven't been able to cover that 90 degree angle, but I feel like that minimal straight line is gonna be a lot less risky than leaving the whole front plate straight line exposed. I think the bushes do a good job of breaking up the vehicle and I'm willing to take that risk. If we look at silhouette, I think it's acceptable. We use a good mix of colors, but we don't have colors that are super contrasting with each other. So colors that are super contrasting with bushes sticking over the side of our tanks will help us not have that rigid silhouette. I'm a little nervous about the shadow. I didn't have enough camouflage to cover the entire lower plate, so you can kind of see where that shadow comes into play down there. So in order to mitigate this, I'm gonna adjust my play style and use ridge lines. So most of the time, my lower plate's not gonna be exposed anyways. So that was a risk I was willing to take. Shine, I got my two front armor plates that are over the tracks. I got them covered, so no worry about direct sunlight being reflected towards my front. In regards to color, I like our setup here. We have a lot of darker green and some brown. They're different colors, but they're close enough on the spectrum where it's not gonna cause a massive shift. It's not like we have red and yellow next to each other. We do have that one lighter green bush, but if you have been out in the woods before, sometimes you know that certain plants might be a lot brighter than ones around it, and I'm willing to take that risk. But generally speaking, I think this is a pretty good setup. I have minimized the risks the best I can, and I've also taken risks in a few spots, and that was up to my own preference. So you as a player are gonna have to determine also what you feel like. You can tweak your camo setups any way you like. After watching this video, you should have a basic understanding of what it takes to correctly apply camouflage to any tank. So now hopefully you can get the jump on your enemies on the battlefield. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider giving me a thumbs up, subscribing for more. I do have more tutorials planned for the future and leave your comments. What did you like? What did you not like? I'm always trying to make the content better. Thanks again, everyone and I'll see you in the next one.